25 Weird Things from Princess Margaret's Life, The Sister of Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. Disobedience is my fun. This was the blunt statement made by Princess Margaret of England to the French poet and film director Jean Cocteau. She was the only sister of Queen Elizabeth II and her life was plagued with controversies that were far from what a member of royalty should do, especially in the 20th century when there was too much secrecy and social pressure for a liberal yet despotic and spoiled woman. After 21 years of her death, the princess continues to raise controversy, especially due to The Crown, the series in which Netflix has exposed the life of the woman who was also known as the Countess of Snyder or the Rebel Princess. Today, we have prepared this material with 25 weird things from Princess Margaret's life. Get ready to enjoy the eccentricities of a woman who, in her own way and history, before diving deep, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate notifications to stay up to date with our updates. Number 1. Party after party. Princess Margaret attended many parties, and in several of them her way of drinking made her excessively uninhibited. One of the sources that affirm this is the biography Darling Night, in a glimpse of Princess Margaret written by Keith Brown. It is known that she also attended a party where she met the artist Yoko Ono and the musician George Harrison. In 1979, the Hollywood star Sue Mengers organized a party in Margaret's honor at her home in Los Angeles, where stars such as Jack Nicholson, Sean Connery, Robin Williams, Angelica Houston, and John Travolta were present. Number 2. Her elegance in dress. Princess Margaret was a fashion icon and admired Dior's new look. She turned a deaf ear to stereotypes. While the fashion was to wear a necklace or a bracelet, Margaret enjoyed wearing both very elegantly. She loved sunglasses, gloves, and coats, and often wore bright scarves or hats that matched perfectly with her beautiful and sensual dresses. The good taste in dressing that is appreciated in the series The Crown made her own style of Margaret Lowe talked about during the 1950s. Number 3. A very peculiar routine. The princess woke up at 9 a.m. and had breakfast in bed. After delighting her palate, she listened to the radio and skimmed the newspaper for about two hours while consuming one cigarette after another. She always left the newspaper scattered on the floor of her bedroom. At 11, she took an hour-long shower, then got ready, and around 12.30, she savored a stimulating cocktail before lunch. She had a four-course meal with her mother, and each had half a bottle of wine. Cry Brown also describes this particular routine in his book. Number 4. A Tardy Princess. Apparently, Margaret was always late for dinner, and this posed a problem because the royal protocol did not serve food until she arrived, and that could be prolonged for hours. Novelist Nancy Mitford told her mother in a letter about her experience at a Parisian scene attended by the Countess of Snow, expressing her displeasure because they had to wait hours for Margaret as dinner was scheduled for 8.30, and her stylist began styling her just at that time. Number 5. She liked to improvise. Biographer Aronson wrote in Princess Margaret. A biography that on one occasion, Dermer organized a dance and Princess Margaret took the microphone from the band's interpreter to give a concert. She demanded that they accompany her with Cole Porter songs. The attendees, instead of dancing, took their seats to be spectators of an improvised concert. They even cheered her on. According to Dermer, as reported by Sane, Princess Margaret became somewhat manic in trying to perform sinuous turns while wearing a long dress. Number 6. Arrogant and rude. Princess Margaret's arrogance bordered on rudeness. For example, in a diplomatic scene, one of the hosts asked her if she wanted to see a photo album of his family. The princess rudely replied, What the hell do I want to see that for? On another occasion, it was she who asked the renowned model Tiwi in a contemptuous tone, Who are you? And the young woman replied, I am Lady Harvey, ma'am, but people call me Tiwi. Princess Margaret responded rudely and disdainfully, What a misfortune. In the royal family at war, the former butler of Princess Diana stated that he himself was a victim of Margaret's rudeness when, 
breaking every rule of education and courtesy, she blew smoke from her cigarette in his face. Her detestable behavior made the royal staff support Her Highness Rudeness, number seven, an imaginary friend for real faults. Princess Margaret blamed her cousin, Halifax, her imaginary friend, for everything that went wrong. This was her peculiar and extravagant way of shirking her responsibilities. Number 8. A heavy smoker. It is unusual to see a princess smoking, but there are plenty of images of Margaret with a cigarette in her hand. Several sources claim that she started her bad habit when she was a teenager. The harsh circumstances of her marriage led her to accentuate her vice even more. She smoked nearly 60 cigarettes a day until 1991 when her health began to decline. But, that's not the end of her extravagance. While carrying out her activities, she always had a servant by her side carrying an ashtray so that it wouldn't become a problem. Number 9. A single brand of whiskey. Princess Margaret was a lover of good wine and whiskey, especially Scottish whiskey James rose with a touch of mauve water. She rejected any other brand of whiskey, regardless of the occasion, and her hosts knew this well. Embassies made sure that famous grouse was present at official gatherings she attended abroad. In fact, there is an anecdote from the mid-1980s when she was at the Macallan Distillery and rejected a glass of the famous single malt whiskey. Cigarettes and alcohol were her constant companions for years, and Princess Margaret was often seen with a cigarette in one hand and a whiskey glass in the other. Number 10. Princess Margaret's particular hobby was gluing the striking surface of matchboxes to glasses to easily light each cigarette. Number 11. Clandestine romance. Margaret had an affair with the distinguished and handsome Captain Peter Townsend, the equerry and trusted man of King George VI. He was 16 years older than her and they were in love. According to royal informants, she was 17 when the attraction between them began, but his previous marriage and two children weighed more than not being a member of the British nobility or aristocracy. Margaret and Peter had been discreet with their attraction, but suspicions arose when she removed a piece of lint from the captain's jacket lapel on the same day as Queen Elizabeth II's coronation. The press captured the incident and the news spread like wildfire. To separate them, the Queen and the British Parliament sent Peter to Brussels as an heir attaché, and he returned when Margaret turned 25, waiting for their engagement to be announced since she didn't need the Queen's approval at that age. Number 12. Surprising statement. Despite the initial scandal, the press and a good portion of the British people eagerly awaited the announcement of the engagement between Peter Townsend and Princess Margaret. However, possibly coerced, and to the surprise of the majority, she caused a stir again by announcing through a statement that she would not marry Peter. This deeply hurt Townsend, who was left behind regarding the privileges that Margaret did not renounce. However, apparently, they had agreed not to marry anyone else. Number 13. The first commoner husband in 400 years, in 1958. Margaret met a magazine photographer named Anthony Armstrong Jones. The photographer shared with the princess a rebellious, free, and hedonistic character, and although Margaret was presumed to be bisexual, she was attracted to him, especially after he did a photo shoot with her. Even so, she did not forget about Austin. When the princess learned that Peter Townsend had married and thus broke their agreement, she allegedly decided to marry Anthony possibly out of revenge. This was the first time in four centuries that a member of British royalty married a commoner, and he became the Earl of Snowdon. David Armstrong Jones was born in 1961, and Sarah Chatto in 1964. Number 14. Her Own Land. In 1959, the capricious Princess Margaret took advantage of an auction to buy the tiara that belonged to Lady Poltimore. She paid £5,500 for the jewel, which was made in 1870 and was worn by the wife of the second son of Paul Poltimore during the coronation of King George V of England. The Countess of Snowdon wore this tiara on her wedding day instead of one of the British royal family's tiaras, as was customary. 
She also wore the tiara in a controversial photo that her husband took of her naked in the bathtub, which is depicted with noticeable changes in the Crown series. Number 15. The luxury wedding of Princess Margaret and Anthony Armstrong Jones took place on May 6, 1960. The wedding was much more luxurious than that of Elizabeth and Philip. It was the first to be broadcast on television, and nearly 300 million people around the world witnessed it remotely. The ceremony cost £86,000 at the time and featured a 60-foot floral arch and 20 cakes. The dress broke with the monarchic stereotype as it had no jewellery or embroidery, but its simple elegance made it the centre of countless praises. Norman Hartnell, the royal designer chosen by Margaret, used 30 metres of fabric for its creation. In addition to the wedding expenses, there were £115,000 spent on a six-week honeymoon in the Caribbean on the Britannia yacht. Number 16. Lady Glenconnor the daughter of the 5th Earl of Leicester and a close friend of Margaret's, invited the couple to spend a few days on Mystique Island, located north of Venezuela. Lady Glen Corner claimed that as soon as Margaret and Anthony arrived, they went to the beach, and the bathing suit that the princess was wearing left little to the imagination. According to the hostess, the newlywed said she did not care, and whoever wanted to see could see. Number 17. Mystique Island as a wedding gift. Colin Tennant, the husband of Lady Glenconnor, a British aristocrat and owner of Mystique Island, gave the princess a 10-acre plot of land on the island as a wedding gift. Mystique was one of the favourite places of the Countess of Snowdon, where very scandalous moments were captured for her and the entire British monarchy. Number 18. I was furious to lose. In the biography that Conway Brown wrote, he tells that on one occasion, Elizabeth II's sister threw the game board to the ground when she was told that one of her answers was incorrect. She was completely furious. Number 19. She hated squirrels. Can you imagine someone hitting you with an umbrella because you're feeding a squirrel? This was the attack that a woman received when Princess Margaret saw her in a park feeding the squirrels, all because she hated them. Number 20. Sex with her husband's friend. Margaret's marriage began to crumble after the birth of their daughter, Lady Sarah Chatto. Lord Snowden mistreated her and was unfaithful, and when she had the first opportunity, she made advances on her husband's best friend and ended up in bed with him. Number 21. A relationship with a man 17 years younger. In 1973, Princess Margaret met a 25-year-old landscape gardener named Roddy Llewellyn, with whom she began a relationship while still married. Paparazzi were aware of this story and were waiting for their chance until the couple was photographed on the island of Mystique while bathing on the beach in February 1976. The photos were the sensational argument that the press spread and the English monarchy found itself involved in an embarrassing scandal. Margaret's husband saw in the photos the perfect excuse to request a divorce. The relationship with Roddy lasted eight years and caused her to lose popularity in the public's opinion. The British Parliament called the princess derogatory and ungrateful. Her sister, the Queen, stopped speaking to her for several weeks. Number 22. The first royal divorce since 1901. Two months after the scandal of the photos, in June, Kensington Palace announced that the Count and Countess of Snowdon were separating, and the divorce was formalized on July 11, 1978. This was the second divorce in the 20th century of a member of the British royal family, the first being that of Princess Victoria Melita of Edinburgh in 1901. Number 23. Adventures with celebrities. Throughout her life, Margaret did not distinguish between nobles and artists. She was linked to figures such as singer-songwriter Mick Jagger, British actor, and comedian Peter Sellers, British actor and writer David Niven, and American actor and producer Warren Beatty. This scandalized members of the monarchy and the British Parliament. Number 24. A possible affair with a gangster. John Valdron, a playboy actor and alleged gangster, claimed to have had a stormy affair with the Countess of Snowdon. 
This adventure is detailed in the documentary The Gangster and the Princess broadcast by Channel 4 in 2008. There is a photo of the two taken in 1974 on Mystique Island. Although royal biographer Lady Colin Campbell criticized the documentary and denied such a relationship. Number 25. Cocaine use is presumed. It is speculated that in 1967, at a Rolling Stones concert, Elizabeth II's sister snorted cocaine from a silver spoon. Apparently, the Countess of Snowdon said, Cocaine, such a fun drug, don't you think? This comment led to the assumption that she had already inhaled it before. Margaret left behind two children and a controversial legacy. Her actions subjected her to ridicule, but she remains a figure of eccentricity and historical significance. She died at the age of 71 on February 9, 2002, after suffering a stroke that left her in a wheelchair. We hope this video has been helpful. If you have anything to add, please share it with us in the comment section. Like this video and share the link with your family and friends so they can also learn about the 25 extravagant things in the life of Princess Margaret, the sister of Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. If you are new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe, and follow us on all our social media, which will be listed below in the description. Remember, people who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it.